everyone. Thank you so much for watching Sunshine in the Kitchen, episode number two. Um, today, I am going to be making mashed potatoes. Oh, first, I have to say, I haven't shot a video in a while because actually last week, I had all my wisdom teeth removed. Yeah, one of the worst pains I think I probably ever had to deal with. And I played sports, and I fractured and sprained a lot of bones, but this beats all of that. So, in the midst of me having my teeth removed, I haven't been able to eat like I would like to. Even Thanksgiving was yesterday and I had to miss out on a lot of food just because it's so painful to eat. However, mashed potatoes has been my new best friend. So that brings me to today's video. I am going to be teaching you how to make some buttery, luscious mashed potatoes. Even if I didn't have my wisdom teeth taken out, this is one of my favorite side dishes. I pair it up with steak, I pair it up with chicken. Even if I just want vegetables and mashed potatoes for the night, that's a great dinner for me. And a lot of people that eat my mashed potatoes enjoy them, and I think you will really like this recipe. Really simple, I promise. Alrighty, so what you're going to be needing is some potatoes, and I have the russet Idaho potatoes. It's just the big brown ones like this. And I also, and this is optional, I cook them all the time with just these potatoes, and they come out wonderful. However, I also sometimes like using the Yukon Gold Potatoes, and it looks like, let me see if it focuses. It's like the little, um, they're usually a little bit bigger than this, and they're really soft on the skin instead of the rough ones, and they're like a white slash yellow color, or maybe a beige, and these ones make your potatoes really creamy, kind of like when you go out to a restaurant and they're just like fluffy and creamy, that's what these do. So. These will be just fine, but if you want to be a little fancy and you want to try them, they're not that expensive, you can use the Yukon Gold Potatoes. Alrighty. And you're also going to need some milk and some butter, salt and pepper, and your knife and a vegetable peeler. Unless you're a pro like my mom and you can just peel them with a knife. I'm not that great yet, so I like to use the peeler. And you're also going to want a strainer or colander. It's one of those big bowls with the holes in it. Um, however, I'm not going to use that today. I'm going to use just a bowl of water. So if you have a bowl, use some water in it and it works just as fine. I'm using that because I want to show you how dirty the potatoes are. Sometimes people think after you skin them and you cut them, since the skin's off, you don't need to wash them. And there's actually so much starch in the potatoes and just dirt. And if you put it in some water, you'll see how foggy the water gets. And I think sometimes people think that you can just put it in the boiling water since it's water anyways, and it'll cook it away. But no, those won't um, eliminate all the starch, and it just won't be the best for your potatoes. So this is a better method, trust me. Alrighty, so let's get started. So you're going to want to peel all of your potatoes. So I have my potatoes here, and what I like to do is I hold it in the palm of my hand, and I just peel away from my body. I never peel towards, but away, like this. And for the Yukon Gold Potatoes, some people like to leave the skin because like I said, it is really soft and you could definitely do that. It's very edible and it does get pretty soft when you boil it. However, I like to remove the skin just for that extra layer of creaminess. It's up to you, totally. Um, to mention usually Yukon potatoes are a little bit bigger and they're a little bit, little bit easier to work with because it's kind of hard to peel a small potato like this but it works but it is easier with the bigger ones. For some reason my grocery store didn't have them at the moment so I got these and both work just as fine but if you could get the bigger ones get those because they will be a lot easier to peel. This is what they look like. Okay, so I am done cutting up all these potatoes. There is a small technique to cut these. Not too difficult, but just a little technique that I like to use. 
So when you are boiling the potatoes, if you cut this potato in any type of way, some big chunks, some small chunks, they are going to cook at different times and the little small ones are going to be cooked faster than the big chunks. So you want to get them all as equal as possible in size. What I like to do for the big Idaho potatoes is I just cut it right in half vertically. I cut each half in half vertically right down the middle. So it's going to be like that. Then I hold them together and I just do big chunks. One, two, three. Depending how long your potato is, it's going to be more slices, but as you can see they're just about all the same. And I'll do the same with the other side. One, two, three. For these small little Yukon Gold potatoes, you can just cut them right in half. Oh, I forgot to mention, the Yukon Gold potatoes actually take a little bit longer to cook than the regular Idaho potatoes. And last time I cooked them all in the same pot, the Idaho were finished cooking and the Yukon Gold were still hard. So this time, I'm going to separate them in two different pots, just because these take about 15 more minutes. I should have showed you what the water looked like before I put the potatoes in, but it was crystal clear water. Now the water is really foggy, and that's just all the starch. And the starch makes you not have really nice, smooth potatoes. See how it's really foggy right there? That's not water that I would want to drink, nor would I want it in my mashed potatoes. So you're just going to run it through water, or if you have a strainer, you can just put all your potatoes in the strainer and let water from the faucet just completely run over it for about three minutes until all that starch is washed away. Then you could transfer it to your pot of oh, Okay, so I drained out all of that yucky water, and I put some nice clean water. I'm going to put the flame on high for both. I got a small pot for the Yukon Gold because I didn't use much. You can either do half russet, half Yukon, or what I even like to do is I like to do probably three quarters of the way russet and 25% Yukon Gold. So just, just a small amount of Yukon Gold just so it gets in with the potatoes and a little goes a long way with the Yukon Gold. So another thing when you're cooking mashed potatoes, you know when you cook pasta you want to get a head start on cooking it so you boil the water to a rapid speed and then you throw your pasta in. You do not want to do that when cooking potatoes. You want to fill up about an inch over the potatoes with cold water and as the water starts to heat up, the potatoes will heat up and I'm not sure why that method works so much. I've been doing it for a long time. I've learned it from a fellow YouTuber and it's just a basic rule for cooking mashed potatoes. So that's what you have to use. Cold water, not hot water, not boiling water, cold water. Also, just like pasta, um, potatoes don't have a lot of flavor. Actually, they don't have any flavor at all at first. So you really want to heavily salt your water. And whatever you put in the water is what the potatoes are going to absorb. Sometimes I like to put garlic. Um, this might sound weird, but I've even used chicken bouillon. I learned that from also a fellow YouTuber, and they were actually really tasty. But for now, these are just basic butter potatoes, so I'm just using salt. And I'll put some more salt right here. A little bit more. Alrighty. So this is going to cook. Um, first, you want to bring it up to a rapid boil. After that, they're going to cook for about... 15-20 minutes because I do have a small batch. This is going to feed about four people. I would probably double the recipe if I were going to do six people or more. And we really want And once you bring it up to a rapid boil and 20 minutes pass, you want to get a fork and you want to stab all the way through the potato. And if it goes smoothly all the way to the core, then they are ready. If it still gives you a little bit of a struggle right when you get to the center, I would leave them for about 10 more minutes because you don't want to take any chances. And you can't really overcook a potato, so it's no harm if you go a little bit extra long. Alrighty, see you in 30 minutes. Okay, so my potatoes are boiling rapidly. Um, once they started boiling, it took about 10 minutes after that, and I poked it with a fork, and it went completely through. Watch, I'll get a spoon so you can see. Alright, so I'm just going to poke that one. Perfect. Went completely through. And just try a couple of them, even though they're all the same size. Just to be sure. Perfect. It even fell apart. It was so soft. 
So it doesn't really take 20 minutes. I got a small batch. That's why I didn't take that long. Um, so you don't want to go based off of any time limit. Just keep poking them, and once you see that it goes all the way through, then they're done. I'm going to strain them. I'm not going to run any cold water over them. I'm just going to strain them and return both of them back to one pot. Okay, so we are back. The potatoes are done. I moved both the Yukon Gold and the Russet Potatoes into the same pot. They are nice and soft, ready to be smashed. And we're going to use this smasher. You can use a rubber smasher, plastic. I like this wire one. I got it from either William Sonoma or Target. It was one of those two. It does wonders. So, when cooking these potatoes, this is not the healthiest dish. I'm not going to lie. You can use a little bit of butter, but I can't promise that they'll taste that great. When I make my potatoes, I use lots of butter, but they are just amazing. So you want to give it a good mash. What I like to do, right when I take them out of the water and strain them, I like to leave the flame on low because it's going to dry out any water that still might be in the potatoes. So give it a good mash. And I like to use about a stick of butter, sometimes even a stick and a half, depending how much I have. So, I'm just going to use my butter. I cut it up, and I'm going to add tablespoon by tablespoon. Here goes about three. And mix that in there. And what I like to do is I like to scrape the sides so I make sure that all of the potatoes are getting nice and mashed and absorbing all of that butter. Okay. Now I'm going to be adding some salt. Lots of salt. Give it some flavor. And some ground up black pepper. There's different courses that you can do. You can do small. I like to do the medium. I love grounded up black pepper. I love the taste, the smell. I love how it just transforms dishes. It's amazing. And then, some milk. So, when I first started making potatoes, I used to get a little bit worried because I would use milk and it looked really soupy at first. Watch. And you could start with a little and then you could add more. And it looks like they're kind of drowning in the potatoes, and it looks like a little bit of a puddle. But, trust me, as you start to smash them, it absorbs all of that milk that you put and makes them really nice and soft. So I even stir it around, mash it up. I turn the flame off because I know all of the water's out. Add some more milk. Smash. I'm going to add the rest of my butter, and I'm just going to mix it around in there. So, so far that is one whole stick of butter. I feel like Paula Deen when she says, and just a little bit more butter, and half a stick I go. But I just love butter. I love salty things. Salt, butter, you name it. I love it. These are really looking good. We're just about done. I'm going to get a small spoon and give them a taste. Those are some great potatoes. I'm going to use just a little bit more butter. And a little bit more salt and pepper. These are going to be amazing. If you're ever going to a potluck, everyone's going to request these potatoes if they know how they taste. Once you feed someone with these, they're always going to ask for them because that's what happens with me. They're like one of my specialties. 
Alrighty, those are done. Now we're going to plate them and I'll show you what they look like. Wow, those are some great looking potatoes. If you're presenting these to some guests, you might want to just get a spoon. And I like to smooth them out. Just like that. I also like to add just a little bit more butter on top. Just like that. Okay, maybe a little more. And you could use green onions. Me personally, I like chives. They're a little bit more mild, but they still bring a little bit of a punch. Now don't those look good? Those are ready to enjoy. Bring them to any potluck, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or even dinner at your house. Anyone that eats these are gonna truly love them. So, if you're like me and you got your wisdom teeth taken out and you need some type of soft food to eat for a week straight that you won't get tired of, these mashed potatoes are the way to go. Now, time for the taste test. Gotta get some onions, cause those are delicious. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Those are amazing. If I had one word to describe these potatoes, I have a couple. Fantastic, amazing, delicious, out of this world. That's four, but they're so good. I don't care. Whoever you make these for are truly going to enjoy them. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give this video a big thumbs up. And if you have any special requests, comment down below. Until next time, God bless from my kitchen to yours.